Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 76 of the J Situation podcast. I'm recording this on August 24th, 2021. The Grip Pod is back. That's right. <laughs> Look at the picture. <laughs> Look at the picture I posted posted with the podcast. The Grip Pod is back. I put it back in my rifle. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't even know if I'm going to take it off again. I, I, I just, I like it so much. And, you know, I, I have the quad rail back on the rifle there. I, you know, I, I did install that URX4 on an upper receiver. You know, the Knight's Armament URX4, that fancy unitized M-Lock rail. And I, you know, actually, I don't think it's aligned correctly on that upper I installed. I was looking at it after I did it. I just haven't had time to mess with it more, but I need to make sure something didn't go wonky with the shims because I was looking at the the barrel didn't quite seem centered in the upper. I was like, that's not right. It's like, that can't be right. Something's not aligned. I don't know why. It might be because, you know, you, you use the shims and then it bottoms out on the shims and the, the rails are really not meeting the upper. So I don't know. I got to investigate that. I don't know. Something might be up with the with the rail. It's probably not the barrel, but now I got to check all of it. So I'm like, ah, it's a whole thing. I don't have time for that right now. So yeah, got the quad rail sitting there. I'm, I'm looking at the gun. It's sitting against my bookshelf right next to the ladder. See how on this bookshelf I have here in my office, and it? it's beautiful. It's got. A, I actually have a silencer cover on the silencer. I'll talk talk about that on today's episode. But this rifle, man, this knight's quad rail. Is there a better looking rail? than the free float mid-length rail adapter system. I mean, when you really think about it, is there a, is there a better looking rail? I don't think so. You know, the URX4 is pretty, but it, is it quad rail pretty? I, I don't think so. I don't think it is. And frankly, this grip pod just tops it off. Tell you what, and you... Get off my lawn. <laughs> you know you know who does not sell grip pods but should? Silencer Shop. <laughs> the, the J Situation podcast is proudly sponsored by Silencer Shop, the most efficient and intelligent way to purchase silencers. Yeah. You know, as a grip pod consumer, Silencer Shop is not my dealer of choice. You know, but, but as a silencer consumer, they are, you know, as a silencer consumer, they are my infrastructure of choice. You know, they, they've done a lot of cool stuff. They have made an easy system to minimize the likelihood of errors in your paperwork. Remember the, the, the last time we spoke, I talked about how the ATF agents usually mess up. So it'd be good if they had a code to scan so they could reduce their errors so they could minimize, minimize the errors in your paperwork. So they would not lengthen your weight and, you know, the length of the infringement process on your rights wouldn't be increased. Yeah. So I was, I was, I was, my argument was, you know, you use silencer shop, probably it's going to be better because you're probably going to have a lower error rate overall. I would venture to guess if you looked at the error rates in applications going to the ATF from all the dealers. And you looked at them from like the silencer shop versus all the other ones. I bet you silencer shops would be lower error rate. Now, I don't know that for sure. I don't have a lot of information. It's complete speculation. But I would guess. So, yeah. <laughs> what is Jay talking about? No, it might. It could be true. Sounds reasonable. I don't know. Maybe you should ask them. I bet you they'd tell you. They might. They might not. I don't know. But I will say. It does simplify your sponsor purchasing process. They have a money-back guarantee, no transfer fees, no paperwork errors, relatively, and just you and your sponsor with no drama. It truly is sponsor ownership simplified. It is. It is. And, you know, secondly, and most importantly, the J Situation Podcast is brought to you by Pew Science. Pushing the sponsor industry forward one test at a time. I am the owner and technical director of Pew Science. I'm the creator of of the silencer sound standard and the suppression rating. It's all on pewscience.com. It is. It is the simplest and most accurate hearing safe rating if you're suppress small arms. It's very simple. It's a lot of stuff that goes into this, a lot of a lot of testing and analysis, and you know, boiling it down into one number that is based on true human sound perception is really cool. It is. 
It's in section five of the science or sound standard on the website. You know, it walks you through gunshot noise. You know, it shows you the waveformers there. Shows shows you everything from from the beginning. You know, twenty two to three oh eight. It walks you through gunshot noise just like a Wikipedia article. You skip to section five. It shows you the suppression rating. It lets you know how sounds are stacked up in comparison to one another with regard to the sound of the muzzle in the shooter's ear. It gives you a hearing safe dose limit for the particular platforms on which the silencers are tested on the website. It's cool. If it's a higher number, it's generally going to sound better to you. If it's a lower number, it will most likely sound uh, louder to you or more harsh. That's it. Um, you're not going to find it anywhere else. And the sixth se- section of the standard has really in-depth reviews. And, you know, you might say, you might go to them and be like, bro, your autism is on another level here. I can't handle this. I say, no problem, fam. I, I understand. Go to section seven instead. There's a ranking table, super simple. Then when you see what you want to see, then you can go and, and drill down to your heart's content in section six because there's links back to section six in the, in the section seven table. How do you like them apples? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, section seven is that table. It's a database tool. You can sort it, all that good stuff. Now, um, if you're a manufacturer, uh, which you might be if you're listening to this, and you would like to use PewScience for private testing and consulting services, there's a form on the website with which you can submit that inquiry. And, you know, I've been actually a few of those recently, been speaking with some of you, uh, you uh, some gentlemen that they uh, run science or companies, uh, some of them new, some of them old. They uh, would like to test with Pew Science. They say, no problem. Let's talk about it. We talk about the products and you know, uh, keep everything confidential there. And, you know, we move forward with your, with your test program and it generates some good data analysis for you, help, help you with your products, you know, help you with your R&D. You know, and everything will stay confidential in, unless you say, Jay, this is so great. C- can we show this to people? I said, no problem. We can uh, release it to the world on uh, PewScience.com. Sometimes we do that. And, you know, one of the things we did, one of the reviews uh, we did for a company, we'll talk about today. It's one of the topics. Yeah, that was a contracted test. We'll talk about that. You know, talk about some of those results and what, what, what we all learned as, as the community from it. Yeah. You, you know, you can support this podcast you know, I do this every week. <laughs> you, you can support it. Yes, you. You can by by joining with a membership at PewScience.com. When you do that, you know, all the funds from those memberships, they go to help so help this podcast production. They help with the Pew Science website. They help with our testing. They help with uh, all the analytical public reports that you see on the website that you consume, all that stuff. So the membership the membership goes to. Yeah, it does help. It's really cool. And, you know, you say, you know, I do enjoy all those things, Jay, but frankly, I don't want to pay. I say, oh, that's okay. I understand not everyone can. Times are tough. Inflation is running rampant. We're pulling all of our forces out of Afghanistan. It's uh, There's a lot of things going on in the world. You know, you got, you got some kind of crazy virus trying to kill everybody. <laughs> Theoretically. I understand. So yeah, if it's too, say he's too rich for my blood. So I was like, okay, well, you can still spread the word. Give the podcast a good rating there on your favorite podcast provider. You let folks know that silencers and guns are awesome. Hopefully we can uh, normalize the use of suppress small arms for everybody. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I, have, I do have, I do have three, to- I only have three topics for you today, frankly, because I, I'll probably get long winded on them. And I, I did want to limit myself on time. <laughs> so topic one. Um, sound signature review 650 that's right the 50th sound signature review on pewscience.com the CGS Hyperion K on subsonic 300 blackout out of a Q mini fix how how crazy is that you got a Q gun a CGS silencer that's not controversial at all yeah we'll talk about that review topic 2 silencer covers let's revisit this I have talked about it in the past let's, let's get a little bit more in depth Topic three, welcome to all the new Pew Science members. Welcome. Thank you to those of you who have thrown your hat into the ring to keep the grassroots effort going. It is very much appreciated. And, you know, thank you to the consumers who are sending their personal silencers for testing. That's insane. You guys are crazy. The good kind of crazy. Yeah, you are. Okay, topic one at a time of 
9 minutes and 59 seconds. Oh, we beat 10 minutes. Bam. <laughs> Topic 1. Sound Signature Review 650, the CGS Hyperion K on Subsonic 300 Blackout of a Q Minifix. That's a, that's a mouthful. Yeah, boy, howdy. Boy, howdy. Guys, this silencer doesn't even make a lot of sense, frankly, for 300 Blackout Subsonic at all. Like, it's not... It's like, why would you even do that? Like, what? <laughs> so we're literally in the weeds. We are. It's like, Jay, what are you even doing? Now, I do I do want to take a moment to illustrate the sheer autism that is occurring here, if, you, if you're not understanding. Now, frankly, I'm not, I'm not sure a lot of you understand what you are looking at sometimes when I give you data. Like, and that's okay. I mean, you, no, I'm not talking about, like, locally. I'm talking about globally, like, big picture. So, okay, so. So he, 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 okay, for one thing, this data, this data came from a contracted CGS test program last year. Okay, that's where this data came from. You know, th this is a program in which they wanted me to characterize their silencers. Okay, so I did. Uh, this was one of the tests in that program. There were actually a lot of tests in the program. A lot, I mean, a lot of it, actually, most of the tests you haven't even seen. You've seen some, you've actually seen some tests from the program, but you haven't seen all of them. Um, and uh, this, this was one of the tests that frankly, it's a, it's a curiosity, really. It's not, a, it's not, uh, it's not something I would call, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> it's not something I would call, I don't know, a primary interest. Uh, this is not CGS's words. This is like me personally. This is to me a curiosity. Um, this silencer is so small and so light and such low back pressure that you really wouldn't expect anything of it on this platform at all. Like, I wouldn't. Like, if you, if you, t if you just told me its, its first characteristics, I'd be like, eh, okay, I'm not really interested. I'm not really interested J for my personal use. Because it, it doesn't really make sense. Um, you know, to those people that know silencers, you would not expect the Hyperion K to, to even do anything reasonably well here at all. You would not. Now, here we are, though. Yet, here we are. This is almost the last of the group, right? Like, almost the last of the low back pressure 30 caliber silencers that were tested on Supersonic 308 so far, right? You remember, if you think back, so the, the last one in the group is going to be the same NS, right? But... Newsflash, <laughs> I have not tested the Sam NS on 300 Blackout. I have not. I don't even have that data. So, uh, you know, suffice to say, there there will be a hole in our data set for now. There will be. And I'm not, I'm not going to promise I'm going to do it anytime soon either because I have other stuff to do. Okay? That's just the way it is right now for a variety of reasons. And uh, so you're not going to see the Sam NS on Subsonic 300 Blackout anytime soon. You're not. You're just not. Um, but if someone sends me one, you will probably, it's just, I don't have one right now and I don't, there's all other stuff that's more important, frankly, I think. Um, so yeah, now it, it, it's probably going to come down to someone sending me one or me going to buy one just for the, but we've, I've already characterized it on 308. So I'm like, do I need to buy one now? I'm like, I probably do need to buy one so I can test on five, five, six too. I'm like, uh, buy one. I don't want to buy a Sam NS. There's so many of them. I feel like I could just like borrow one, right? <laughs> I might have to buy one. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's get back to the CGS Hyperion K. You know, you, you've you seen the OSS. You've seen the Surefire. Now, now, now this is the CGS. Now, all, all three are low back pressure. We've proven that. You've seen it. You've shot them probably. You, you know that. Now, this is where you have to completely abandon what you have heard from some marketing in the industry. Okay, you do. And I want you to, now I'm going to take a little tangent. Now, some folks have tried to tell people things like, you know, like that the, the Nomad is similar to the Trash Panda. Things like that, right? Now, because I'm, 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 right now I'm talking about these silencers being completely different from each other. Like, this is one example, like the like a no band and a trash panda are completely different silencers, you know, and com and frankly, comparing them and saying they're the same is very, it's it's misleading, 
it's misleading. And, you know, yeah, I'm going to take, I, I am going to take a detour on this topic for a second. I want to tell you, a sto- I actually want to tell you a story from this weekend. So I was, I was at the Texas Trophy Hunters Association uh, show this past weekend. You know, I'm a deer hunter. I'm in Texas. Frankly, I, I, I like trophy hunting. I, I love trophy hunting. I, I eat the meat from the deer. I, I love, I love the whole pastime of it. I like the managing the deer herd. I like to leave the bucks to live as long as they can so they can get their antlers can get as big as possible. And I like to kill them when they're old and big. Like that's what trophy hunting is. Trophy hunting is literally letting the deer live as long as possible. So their antlers get as big as they can. <laughs> that's exactly that's literally feeding them the most rich protein rich diet you can and like figuring out like where they are and like tracking them for years and like watching them year to year to see if you can still find them and then when they get big enough you kill them it's cool anyway it's it's really weird when you think about it but when, when i say it like that it's definitely weird but i am a low fence hunter it is to me in my mind it is the only true form of whitetail deer hunting uh, i will only hunt high fence if the acreage is so big that it's truly free range like that, I, it has to be thousands of acres, thousands and thousands of acres. I won't hunt high, high fence. Um, and even then I usually still, I, I don't know in Texas, we have high fence ranches that are huge like that, but I, I hunt low fence anyway, most of the time, if not all the time. So I met this really nice guy at that show. He worked for an industry company. Turns out he's really into guns and silencers and he, he's a Q fan. Turns out, I guess. We got to talk, and he asked me, man, I have a trash panda, you know, and uh, I have this nomad coming, but I'm really worried about it. And I said, well, why are you worried about it, dude? I'm like, man, that sensor's going to do great. On all. He told me about what rifles he's had. He said, man, no, man, that, that nomad's going to be great on all your rifles. And the guy was like, I don't know, man. I guess I just heard so many bad things about it. I, I'm nervous about getting the stamp back. I was like, dude. Listen to me very carefully, man. Like, go to my website, pewscience.com. I want you to go there, read the reviews, listen to my podcast. I want you to dream about that silencer at night with positive connotation. Okay, you're, you're going to like it on 300 Blackout. You're going to like it on 308. Trust me. So he, he smiled. He thanked me. You know, we got to know each other. We exchanged information, shook his hand. You know, so when I tell you guys you need to consider real data, it's true. You know, there are people out there falling for stuff that's completely false. And you think that you think that guy I talked to is the only guy who's fallen for crazy, crazy talk? No, man, that guy was. And by the way, that guy was not a dumb guy. Yeah, like we talked for a while. He he was intelligent. That dude was intelligent. Like he he builds his guns. Like he was pretty smart. He's a really nice guy. Like he and he works in the outdoor industry too. And and one of his jobs is helping people. Like he's literally like a helper person. I was, I was like, so one of the nicest guys ever. Man, it literally grinds my gears. I'm getting pretty sick of these marketing lies, dude. It's getting on my nerves. So, and I'm in a position where honestly, I don't have to sit silent about it, and I won't anymore. Like, I'm, I'm not gonna sit by and let, watch this happen anymore. Frankly, I'm gonna start calling people out, dude. I am. I'm not. I'm not beholden to anyone. You know, frankly, Pew Science is completely independent. And you know, I was, I was speaking briefly here. I'm gonna name drop. I was speaking briefly to Lucas from T Rex Arms. Shout out, powerful TRX Arms, Pew Science supporter, supporting company. Um, I was talking to him yesterday, and he told me of an entity that tried to hire him to do targeted positive reviews for money. He was telling me about it, and he refused to do it like because he wanted to maintain independence. And like we both agree. We're like, dude, that's the only way. The only way to do this is to be independent. Like You cannot. You cannot be in bed with people, dude. Like it is, it's incredible what things are like. It's, it's insane. So I I respect that dude for that. So yeah, are there, are there going to be some spicy truth telling things, uh, here on, uh, this podcast and going forward? Yeah, probably. You know, there's a lot of Tom Fleury going on in the sponsor industry right now. I, if you guys even, oh my God, dealers, distributors, manufacturers, I know it all too. I know it all, but I, Oftentimes, I don't say anything about it. Well, to all those folks listening, I'm going to protect consumers at all costs. So buckle up. Don't you don't you try to weasel around consumers and make and 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 mislead them. It's not happening. 
Pew Science membership is growing, and I have an obligation to protect the members, and I will. I will. Pro- I will protect Pew Science members at all costs. I'll, I'll burn bridges. I'll burn bridges. I'll salt the earth to do it, dude. Like I don't. Like it doesn't bother. It doesn't affect Pew Science. You see, like Pew Science is is it's literally independent. So Pew Science can function completely autonomously. You see, like the entire industry can be on fire, and it do, it doesn't affect Pew Science. You see, see that's how that works, and that's by design, dude. That's how I made Pew Science. There are no entities like Pew Science. There are none. They don't exist. Okay, all of the other testing entities are tied to dealers, distributors, and sponsor companies in some way. I promise, dude. I promise. And there's been some talk about that recently. Like I'm telling you, don't test me anymore. <laughs> Like, you guys think, oh, we're just going to do all these bad things to consumers, and we're just not going to tell the consumers. They're never going to find out. Oh, really? Okay. You're going to learn today. Okay, so let's talk. Let's get back to this Hyperion K. (laughs) I started that rant. The reason I, look, the reason I was getting into that, guys, the reason I was getting into the Nomad versus Trash Panda and how no one even knew that they were completely different silencers until I tested them. The reason I was getting into that is because you're a, we're about to talk to the talk about the Hyperion K. It has low back pressure, right? The Surefire has low back pressure. The OSS has low back pressure. All the, those three silent and the Sam and S, which we're not going to talk about today. They all three of them have really low back pressure. They all achieve that low back pressure in completely different ways. And frankly, if if someone was going going to, you know, say, oh, the silencers are a copy of one another, well, why aren't they saying that about these silencers? They actually perform similarly in in some metrics. So my my overarching point here is that if you're gonna say something's a copy of something know what you're talking about. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, if someone came to me and said, well, the Hyperion K is just is a copy of the Surefire, so called 762 RC2, I actually might take them seriously. Because I'd be like, huh, you understand silencers very, very well. And some of you may be saying, Jay, that's impossible. How could they be a copy? They're completely different designs. They're different sizes, different materials, different lengths, different diameters. They're made by, they're completely different. Why would you say they're a copy? Well, they're not a copy. But they, the Hyperion K and the Surefire SOCOM 762 RC2 share more similarities than the Trash Panda and Nomad. And that, my friends, is real data. Okay, so with that, let's go on now. The Hyperion K is 6.3 inches long, 10.4 ounces. Very small. Tiny. Flows really fast, though. Flows really fast. Weird. Weird silencer. About as quiet to the shooter as an Omega on a three-way bolt gun. Doesn't make sense. Super weird. Really low back pressure. Wild now with 300 blackout. Subsonic? Dude, it does better than I thought it would, frankly, given what I just said. What did I just get done saying? Super low back pressure. But how does it get... How does it, how does it work? It's weird. There must be something going on with the way it flows. Gas jets through it really quickly. It, I do suspect that is one of the reasons that, look, the bottom line up front, 48.6 suppression rating, dude. 37.6 of the muzzle, 48 flat at the ear. Weird. Okay, it's weird. Let me get a drink of water one second. Okay. Yeah, sorry. So I, I just pulled up the review. Okay, I've pulled up the the review on PewScience.com. Okay, Uh, review 650. Yeah, you can pull up and follow along at home if you want. Go to figure one in this review here. I'm going to skip over the decibels. You didn't even know that. doesn't make it relevant to you at this point. Um, Figure one. I went a little ham. Um, Click on it, make it bigger. Do that for me. Okay, now, you you might be able to see it better if you click on it, make it bigger. Now, um... You see that the same dang type of precursor flow out of the silencer first, just like you did with OSS, right? You see that first before the bullet exit, excuse me, before the bullet exit, you see the precursor flow, right? 
Yeah. Just like you did with the OSS. But less. But less, right? It's weird, right? That's not that weird, but it makes sense, right? It has a little bit higher back pressure than the OSS, right? The Omega metric's a little bit higher, isn't it? It is. But Omega metric's lower than the Surefire Omega metric, isn't it? That's right. Remember, the Surefire was able to trap the precursor flow before it could get out. That's right. We'll talk about that more later in, in this talk, but this makes perfect sense. When you look at figure one, the entire behavior of the silencer jives with what you know about the other silencers too. Everything fits together. You see how everything's consistent? It's almost as if the data's right. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So like I said in the article, if you were to compare the flow type of the Hyperion K, it would probably be similar to matter to the YHM resonator K. It would. But the Hyperion K is quieter in all the flow regimes. And that's weird. Okay. Um, even though it has the same omega, omega metric. You know. And that, my friends, is why silencers are super complicated. Yeah. That, and this is why I test like I do. The human ear cares about a lot of things. And your gun cares about a lot of things too. But sometimes the thing that your ear cares about and the thing your gun cares about are not the same thing. And that is important. That is important because you are not your gun. And that I know that sounds strange, but some, I think it had to be said. Now, the Hyperion K does have some first round pop. It does. It's small. Small silencer has a high flow rate. It's going to have first round pop. There's no way around that. There's just not. Okay. The only way it's not going to have first round pop when it's a really small and has a high flow rate is if the flow rate is so high, it barely traps any gas and it's the same NK and it's louder than loud can be. Probably can't even tell a lot of first round pop. I can't remember the Sam K data. I'm just using it as a quick example, but I'm assuming that it's just loud to begin with. It's like, a, it's ridiculously loud. Okay. So, um, the long story short, the first round pop of the Hyperion K doesn't surprise me, especially what we know about these type of silencers, the short silencers. Now, what does surprise me is how the overall suppression rating stacks up against the other silencer shown on through here in blackout so far. That does surprise me. So let's let's go all the way. Let's, we're going to skip over a lot of stuff. Let's go to figure six. Scroll down. Do, 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 do. Oh, I need to make the window bigger. Okay. Wait. Okay. Figure six. Yeah. Okay. So in figure six in this review, I have put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Nine silencers. Yeah. This is all subsonic through here blackout in in this. Um look at the so I put the high pair on K in that table. I, I actually placed it strategically so it would be easier for you to compare some stuff. Uh, I put it next to this the surefire, the the SOCON 762 RC2. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I mean, I am my throat's dry today. <clears throat> I had a lot of meetings today. I think I just, I've been talking all day. My voice is going. I, I can hear it going. It's not. It's, uh, hopefully, I make it through this podcast. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So I put the Hyperion K next to the Surefire on the table. Um, it's weird. Right? It's a short silencer. The Hyperion K is. So the origin of pressure is closer to your ear on the mini fix, right? But it's still almost five points quieter at the ear than the Surefire. Right, 43 or 48? Uh, 43.4. Okay, so less than five points quieter. But but isn't that weird? So the, 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 the pressure, the origin of pressure is closer to your ear because it's a, it's a, it's a shorter silencer, but it's still quieter. It, it, and, and it has a higher flow rate than the Surefire. Two. It's still quieter. And it's, it's quieter at the muzzle. It's quieter at the muzzle. It's quieter at the ear. You know? When you look at it being quiet at the muzzle and the quieter at the ear, it's like, it makes sense. But you're like, how is that? How is it that the Hyperion K is quieter than the Surefire so, SOCOM 762RC2? How is that? It's frequency components, guys. That's what it is. Um, 
it's just how the silencer sounds. It, it's it's just it's weird. Like that alone could be a factor for some people on the fence for a silencer that has low back pressure they can put on a scar. Like like the Hyperion K is a little louder on supers than the Surefire is. Um but it's neck and neck to the shooter on 308 bolt gun. And it's quieter on subs. And it's smaller and lighter. So that's crazy to me. It is. Like when you really think about it, when you look at all these different metrics, you're like, what? That's odd. It's just really odd. It's just like what a what a strange outlier to me. You know, it's just weird. It's just like some of these silencers are just weird. And you know, it's this is okay, so it's it's louder than the half Nelson on subs. It's quite, you know, quite a bit louder. But the half Nelson is basically a bigger trash panda, right? So it's gonna be good on subs. Now that makes sense. Now now the Hyperion K is quieter than the Vox at the ear. Um that's a that's really interesting. That that is actually a very interesting thing. That is something that I hope you guys are paying attention to that. I hope you know what? I hope Energetic Armaments listening to this. I really hope they read this review. I really hope they're seeing these. I don't know. They don't talk to me a lot. I don't know if they're paying attention, but this is very important because flow rate and frequency are playing a role here. And th- it is there's something going on. All right. You know, I'm 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 still examining some of this because I have a really large desire to start exploring more of the why in the flow field from a silencer. And you know, there's actually some more testing and the more types of testing we're gonna need to do and crazy analysis that we're gonna need to really understand everything about the sound field. That's future stuff, but I think I can do it eventually as as we grow. I need more resources, but um but you're you're starting to see some weird stuff and to fully understand that weird stuff some of it we're gonna have to do a little more investigation we just don't have time to dig as deep right now i'm just giving you this data you have it it's right and when later later on we'll we'll do what we can but we have plenty of other things to do first okay so back to this now when you compare the resonator k to the hyperion k so the YHM to the CGS, um, the Hyperion K flows just as fast. Just like I said before, it flows just as fast, but the Hyperion K performs higher in every sound signature metric. It doesn't make sense. Now, go to let's go to figure seven. So we scroll down. You're a figure six, just looking at subsonic data. I made another figure with the silencers that we, we have both supersonic and subsonic data for. So go to figure seven. Okay, now you're in figure seven. This is this is another one of those crazy figures in which I totally decimate your brain by putting everything on there at once. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have supersonic and subsonic data and back pressure data for five silencers. Okay, so it's, it's insane. That's so much data on the chart. In the article, I warn you, I say there's a significant amount of data in figure seven. The reader is encouraged to please observe the plot legend. <laughs> like, don't get confused. There's so much data. Now, um, When you look at the Hyperion K and the Resonator K in in Figure Seven, the subsonic difference is kind of crazy. It is. That's how different those two silencers sound to the shooter. The supersonic difference is the same thing. It's crazy. Look at the difference. If you were the shooter listening to those two silencers on those guns, the difference between the Resonator K and the Hyperion K would be drastic. Like, now, is the difference between the Hyperion K and the Surefire going to be that drastic? No, it's not. Okay, the Hyperion K is going to beat... It's going to beat... uh, the, the, the SOCOM 762RC2 on subs, but it can be smaller and lighter. Like I said before, so that can help. Now, what about flash? Not sure. You know what I mean? It, it's, so this is interesting data. This stuff is crazy. I, I still can't believe, actually, the Surefire does what it does. The RC2 is interesting, you know? So I can't so wait to see what the RC3 does. It's, another thing is going to be cool. Now, a really interesting thing is something I compared in figure eight and figure nine. 
in figure eight and figure nine. Um, oh, am, I, am I done talking about figure seven? Uh, I mean, there's so you can see it. I mean, it's it's kind of the same. It it, it it's kind of the same story, right? Every time I make one of these figure sevens in these 300 blackout subsonic reviews, you know, you we see the same thing. We see the Vox doing well on subsonic to the you know the muzzle and the ear because it's, it's a basically a subsonic silencer. You know, we see it. It, it this time it lost out to the Hyperion K at the ear, which is interesting. We see the Vox kind of not doing too hot on supersonic because it we you know we've talked about why it doesn't have any porting at all it's just it's a very simple silencer and we we saw these other silencers so like right now you you have this group this group of super and sub silencers in figure seven that have very low back pressure four of those silencers you know have extremely low back pressure some do better than others it's kind of interesting it's really interesting and that actually, <laughs> it does bring me to another point I want to talk about. And I, oh man, I hope I don't make this too complicated. Now, I, I, well, I think we have to go to figure eight for it. We do. Okay, I'll talk about it. So, and I was, I don't, I didn't know if I wanted to talk about this yet, but we'll talk about it. Now, it's a really interesting thing. And if you go to figure eight and figure nine, you can start to see it. I did this. I did those that figure eight and figure nine. I did the same thing in this review as I did for the OSS and the Surefire in their 300 blackout subsonic reviews, and I overlaid the supersonic 308 waveform on top of the subsonic 300 blackout waveform. Okay, I did this in both pressure and impulse space. I wanted you to see both. Okay, this is important. Now, a really interesting observation I had after doing this was how the Hyperion K definitely vents quickly. Um, it's a telltale sign of low back pressure. Like it is. Um, you can see the precursor flow in the subsonic waveform. You see significant muzzle blast flow with the bullet exit. It's like the OSS. It behaves like the OSS, not the Surefire. It's wild, right? So in magnitude, it's lower than the OSS. <clears throat> and in behavior, it's similar to the OSS. Okay, so let me say that again. It's lower magnitude than the OSS, but it behaves the same way. Understand? Okay. So these three data sets show, show us something incredibly important, really. They show us that there is a tipping point for some designs and silencer sizes. We, we can draw a conclusion here. It's not definitive. Okay, this is a preliminary conclusion. We can draw a conclusion. Preliminary conclusion is that precursor flow release in early time may be an indicator of low back pressure. And furthermore, once you get past a certain flow restriction, or once back pressure gets high enough, your exit event becomes decoupled from your primary flow in the subsonic regime. That's what we've seen. So I wonder if we can bound it now. You know, we might be able to. And, and, and where I'm going with this is we have supersonic 762 omega zones, right? We have the P-Science Omega metric. We have the supersonic 762 omega zones I've created for you. So we have that metric. And now we have subsonic waveform behavior for some of the silencers that we can correlate to omega zone. So what does that mean? It means that we might, we might be able to predict subsonic performance by using supersonic suppression rating and omega. You heard? It's interesting, right? Like, what if we could do that? What if we could take a sound signature metric, like the suppression rating, add another waveform metric, the omega metric, and back up behavior in another flow regime? Because, huh. I mean, what you're doing is you're taking suppression and, and frequency components that are baked in, and then you're adding a, a flow dynamic parameter. Well, isn't that just what subsonic suppression is? Anyway, I, I just blew, blew my own mind. Like when, when you really think about it, isn't that what a silencer does? I mean, if you tested a silencer on, subson on supersonic, 
so you've you've exercised the entire silencer volume at extremely high pressure, pulling out all the performance metrics out of it, pulling out all the signature components you can at a high amplitude. If you've done that, right, and then you've also quantified its flow flow rate. Shouldn't that correlate to subsonic suppression behavior too? Shouldn't it scale in some way and be related? You would think it would be. Like I, I don't think you can go the other way. I don't think you could test something subsonically and then and then predict supersonic performance. But can you predict subsonic performance from supersonic using another term, using another higher order relationship, the omega metric? Can you do that? I don't know. I thought about it today. Just think about it. I didn't write that down. But thought about it. So I think there's something to it. Will it be perfect if we try? I don't know. Will it be a perfect prediction? No, it probably won't be. But I bet there's a relationship. So I need to. I've been so busy. I haven't been able to go, go into the pure research like that. This is like off into the deep end, frankly. But it is potentially groundbreaking when you think about it. I'm sure some of you probably look at it when I... I mean, you guys have the data I have that's published. So why don't you just go do it yourself? No, just kidding. Uh, don't do that. Um, I mean, you could. No. Um, if nothing else, this should give you an e- even more confidence in this data. Right? Seems like, you know, you know, seeing things like this, it makes you know it's right, doesn't it? Like, that's how important figure eight and figure nine is, really. I mean, it. Like you can't you can't understand figure eight and figure nine of this review or the OSS review in subsonic or the surefire review in subsonic. Like you can't understand those figures and not think the data's right, right? I mean, you, you, now if you you have you have those three science reviews in con, in context now, so now you see them all and you're and 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 this is this is now it's it's uh, it's proven. <laughs> <laughs> the data's right. It's like I, I don't know how else another way. To, I mean, you 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 have an omega metric, you have suppression rating, you have timing of exit events, you have precursor flow escaping from the silencer. Like, what more could you want in the pedigree? It's almost like you have all these fingerprints, right? It's like if one thing was wrong, it would all be wrong. Understand? Like that's why it, this is consistent, and this is why. And people didn't. I don't think a lot of people particularly some dealers and distributors really understood the importance of what I'm like that, that like the folks that like wanted me to tell them how to do I, I don't know what they wanted they I guess they wanted PewSoft I don't I don't know what they would do with PewSoft they most certainly wouldn't do this <laughs> it's like what <laughs> just because you have PewSoft doesn't mean you can do this you, you have to actually do the analysis like so what i'm saying is like you if one of these things was was wrong it would all be wrong you you understand because the this the very fact that it's consistent means it's correct okay so that that's that i mean that that's what that's what the timing of these of these waveforms should show you uh and and that and that's what is actually the most pleasing like forget about like i know the hyperion cake okay cool silencer really great blah 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 see just a nice company they're so nice bobby and josh are cool <laughs> that's true all those things are true it's a, it's, a, it's a nice silencer it's a great hunting silencer for for supersonic you know put it on put it on a tapered barrel fix it, it's it's incredible i killed both deer that i killed last year and my my woman, she the deer she killed, it was all with the Hyperion K on the on the three way fix. Per, it's a really great. It's like an Omega but smaller and lighter. Okay, so yeah, it's a cool silencer, but but really that's not really even what I'm most excited about here at all. Like it's really not. And I mean, actually, me personally, it's not really that exciting a silencer to me. Frankly, I'm more excited about the Helios QDTI. I think it's more well rounded, and. Uh, I like it better. Just me personally. I don't care what you buy at all. Um, now I will, but but that's not really what I'm most excited about here. What I'm excited about is how pleasing the pedigree of this data came together. You know, we I test this 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 test was from October, dude. What, what's the date? Yeah, twenty four October. 
of 2020. I didn't, I mean, I, I published, I gave this to CGS in their test report, but I didn't give them this level of detail. This detail was 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 um, funded by Pew Science. You see, because the, the science or companies, when they get their test reports, they don't get all the analysis d- unless they pay for that. You know, they're getting, a, they pay for a test report to get their, their test report, but they're not getting this. This is something I do with Pew Science funding to really understand everything. Okay. This is completely different. This is something that I do provide to some clients, but that's special. Okay. And so this, this is something that I felt I needed to do for the community at large, just to make sure we were on the right track. And turns out we're more than on the right track. We, we are the track, dude. I want, I, I want you. And I had, I put the links in the reviews. If you click the OSS review and you scroll down all the way down, scroll down to figure eight and figure nine in the OSS review, you will see strikingly, strikingly similar behavior in the Hyperion K waveforms and the OSS waveforms. If you blur your eyes, you'll see similar shape. You will. <laughs> you'll see that up in subsonic and the red curves, the pressure comes out and it's the highest it was and then it diminishes and you see the sub the the supersonic black curves supersonic bullet exit and then pressure ramps up happens in the cgs review happens in the oss review same 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 different magnitude same behavior you go to the surefire review the the waveforms are completely different the precursor flow is trapped And you have the reverse relationship in which the combustion from the subsonic signature happens late time because it's suppressed or an early time. And in supersonic, it comes out fast. It's a function of the silence or length and the method of trapping gas. Okay. So when you so these three reviews, I love when you have I love okay, when you have when you have two data points, you can you can draw a line. When you have three data points, you have a trend. Okay. And and that is that is balls on right. I mean, it is we got the omega metric, we have the suppression rating, we have subsonic and supersonic flow regimes. For three silencers that do similar things completely differently, and we see the fingerprints, and they're consistent, complementary, and correct. That, my friends, is a big, this is a big day for Pew Science. It's a big day for Pew Science members, and it's a big day for the silencer industry. Because the people that understand what's going on now are, are, are on a level of silencer understanding that nobody has had before in in public in in the public okay that's how important this review is and and i and i don't think people are going to know that unless i say it because i don't think cgs knows it and i don't think that surefire knows it and i don't think that oss knows it either Okay, and I'm serious about that. And, and if that sounds a little conceited or like I'm kind of being a blowhard, well, so be it. But it's important. Okay, so so yeah, I just wanted to say that. And you know, I yeah, I put a summary in the review. Oh yeah, it's a compact silencer. It's nice. You know, I wrote things about it. But but really, what I wanted to do here on this podcast is tell you something really big picture. And I didn't think the review was an appropriate place to do it. Okay, I'm going to save it for a, a summary article with a lot with comparing the silencers to, you know, to prove out some more of this theory, because frankly, the data pedigree is paramount. And these silencers are a means to an end for me. You know, they're the most important thing in the world to this to the silencer manufacturer. They're, you know, they're impor- the most important thing in the world to, you know, some of you consumers that want the silencers. That's true. 
But to me, and to Pew Science, this is a means to an end. These silencers are a means to an end. This is solving the riddle of silence. That's what I'm doing. And the sooner that the people who are calling me a shill and like paid off by companies and all this stuff, the sooner that you that those people realize that the silencers mean nothing to me and this is all about the data and understanding everything, the the, the more productive we can be in the future. <laughs> Okay, like all the people, like all these dealers that are like, oh, we're going to do it. We're going to may do this and we're going to do and this. And Jay doesn't know what he's done. But you guys are off in the weeds. You're you're not even you're, you don't understand what you're doing. Like you you need to pay attention to this research. And what you need to be doing is helping. Instead of, you know, because this is this is important. Okay, okay. So all in all, <laughs> Hyperion K to me personally. I'm sticking with a bigger and quieter silencer for 300 blackout. That's me. That's me. You do whatever you want. For me, eh, I'm not really interested. Okay? But in a pinch, it'll work for the subsonic 300 blackout, okay? Now, for such a short and low back pressure silencer, it does well on the cartridge. It does well on, on subsonic 300 blackout for what it is. It's, in, it's It does better than it should. Okay? And now we know why. I think. <laughs> Which is cool. Okay, let's go, let's go to topic two. Man, you're like, this guy is literally insane. He's like, oh, it might be. All right, top, I spent, oh, I spent a long time on that one. Okay, topic two at a time of 51 minutes and 15 seconds. See, I'm glad I only did three topics today. That was ridiculous. I had a lot to say. Sometimes that happens, topic two. Yeah, topic two, science recovers. Let me get some water. I feel like that last topic was up to a rough start. I had to find my groove. Sometimes it takes me a while to find my groove. Okay? Sometimes I, sometimes I have to find my groove. I had a long day. A uh, long, long day. I, I do a lot of... You know, I do a really... some. I do a lot of stuff during the day. Some of it is very taxing on my brain. <laughs> my head hurt when I started this thing. I haven't eaten dinner. All right. Now, this science recovery, guys. I, I, I know I talked about science recovers a while back. Um, I haven't used the silencer cover that is on my silencer now yet. Um, meaning I haven't shot it yet. I was going to shoot this weekend and I, frankly, I was, I was too tired and I didn't want to go out and shoot. I had other work to do too. And I was like, I'm not going like, I went to that show all day Saturday that took a lot out of me. And then I was like, Sunday, I was like, I don't want to go shooting. I, I was too tired. I was going to shoot the silencer cover. Didn't. I bought the when I bought the one I put on there. It, it's from Liberty's Defense. Interesting company name. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I like I said, I'm post a photo of it with a podcast. So you'll be able to see it. So yeah, I finally bought a science recover, and the reason I did is because I did actually burn myself a couple of times when switching suppressed uppers on my machine gun. Yeah, I was shooting and I was using the tailgate of my truck as a shelf. You know, onto which I placed a placed a bunch of stuff. I did. I was doing some back and forth comparisons with different uppers on the machine gun, and uh, I kept switching them around. And I did it enough that I somehow forgot one of the silencers was really, really, really hot, like one of the uppers. And I burned the crap on my arm. Like I reached over, like the it, the gun wasn't even assembled. It was just an upper, and it was like laying there on a case with like the silencer out in midair to like not burn something, because I had the foresight not to burn my stuff. <laughs> apparently not enough foresight not to burn myself um so yeah I, I somehow i don't know and i i reached over and i burned the crap out of my arm um and i thought to myself man in the future when i am when i sling my main rifle after shooting i really don't want this feeling again this is a bad feeling so i'm gonna buy a cover and so i waited a while it was actually a few months i didn't this is a while back and i didn't buy one i was like yeah i didn't need one right away and i was like well oh. and i thought about it i started asking around because i wanted to see well what cover do you guys have what cover do you use and blah blah, blah. because i wanted to buy the right thing i didn't want to buy something dumb so uh you know it's the thing i don't need one for many guns that's the reality i, I really don't and i've talked about this before like there's this very specific reason why i wanted one okay to put it on a silencer that goes on my main rifle so I can sling the rifle after shooting a lot of rounds through it when it's very, very hot. Like, that's the very specific reason I bought this for. It's a high round count situation. This isn't... So, so here are some reasons you probably don't need a cover. 
Here, here's what you don't need a cover for. You don't need one for home defense. You don't need one for hunting, unless unless it's like a target rich environment, like a hog or prairie dog situation. I think that's a little bit abnormal. You you don't need one if you're barely shooting it. Okay, you don't need one for a handgun. Don't put a silencer cover on a handgun. Do you like you know, a handgun silencer? I guess maybe if you had some kind of holster that could accommodate it. I struggle to see a reason. What are you going to shoot enough rounds through a handgun with a silencer, and then holster it? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you will. I don't know. Maybe you have one of those holsters that lets you anchor the flashlight into the holster. Yeah, could be. Could maybe do that. I don't know. Here's some re- okay. Here's some reasons why you might need a silencer cover. Okay, you burn yourself because you're dumb like me <laughs> sometimes. Or maybe you have mirage. You know that's one thing. If you're shooting a bolt gun for a lot of shots, the silencer gets hot. It can obscure your scope view from mirage. It, it it's happened to me before. Just once though. That's not something that happens to me often. It depends on your setup and use case. You know, I think that's about it, man. Like, when you put a lot of rounds through a silencer, they get hot. Like, especially rifle silencers. There's a lot of combustion energy going through the silencer. It's ridiculous. It is. So maybe that's, you know, maybe that's the the thing. It's like, I don't, this is why I re- I'm really not a fan of putting cloth on your on your weapons. It's just an accessory. And I think it's, a lot of people do it for looks. I think it's stupid. I think it's a waste of money. So I think you really need to think about, do you need one? And I think for my machine gun, I need one. I, I Because the more and more, like if I go out shooting with this like after work, like I I do love my VTAC sling and I do, that's, dude, that burn I had sucked. So I was like, I'm not going to. I don't want to burn my pants. I really like the pants I have. So yeah, so so I took a look at all the covers. So what I did, okay, so with this cover, what I did, I took a look at the covers. And for my application, I wanted something that would be able to stand up to fully automatic fire. I was like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. Like, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Like, I I don't, these, these things aren't that expensive. I'll just buy the best one. So I looked it up. Um, I, I want something that could handle sustained fire. Like if I did two mag dumps, and then I kept shooting. Like if I did two mag dumps messing around and then slung the rifle, I was like, oh, I'm going to go shoot some steel. I don't want to wait for the silencer to cool off. I'm going to go shoot more. I was like, what cover can do that and be okay? You know what I mean? And like have no problems. And like be outside all day and shoot it and not care. Never even think about it. Like what silencer is like almost overkill for that? Or silencer cover is almost overkill for that. Like that's what I was looking for. I was like, let's do it. Let's be crazy. Um, And then also what I wanted was I wanted something that wouldn't move. Like once you put it on, like when you're shooting, I didn't want it to move when I'm shooting. That was something that was important. Um, it's actually a concern. I was like, well, what if the cover shifts when I'm shooting? I was like, ooh, that was that would be a problem. So like, yeah. So I had some Coltac covers here that were sent with some silencers for testing. I, ha- I, saw, I had some of those. It's not really the color scheme I was looking for, and they were for silencers I didn't use on the gun. So I was like, ah, I don't want those. I didn't really look, kind of look, looked a little bit like they would melt too. I was like looking at the part of it. I was like, that doesn't seem like it'd be that durable from what I know about heat transfer. I was like, eh, I don't think about that. And so, you know, I decided against that brand. I had, I have an old uh, silicone Bowers Griptastic for this really big sub gun can I have from back in the day. Um, but that's not appropriate. So that's not going to work for this at all. Um, for, for one, it's not the right size for two. I don't think that's a good idea for this. Um, it's not going to hold up. And then um, I saw Burnproof Gear. It's an interesting company. Um, nothing about those covers really made me think they would be any different. Like any different than the Coltac. I was like, this doesn't seem... This doesn't seem... I'm like I don't know. They're, they're kind of universal in sizing, so I wasn't sure how they're retained on the silencer. I was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know about that. Um, I started asking people, and some people started telling me different things about all these covers. I'm like, okay. I, thought, I saw the Liberty's Defense covers. I interacted with some of the folks who worked there before, uh, and one of the dudes, actually, he um, he's a SWAT guy. Um, shout out uh, shout out to Nick. He's a great guy. Uh, we talk a lot. Um, so I took, a, I took a closer look at their covers, um, and you know, to be clear, 
this is not a commercial for this brand. Like I, I have actually haven't even shot the the gun with a with a cover on it on the silencer yet. I haven't. I haven't shot it. I tell you what, I bought I bought one. Um, I think you know what I think they actually offered to give me one, and I was like, no, dude, I will buy it. Like they offered to, they're like, yeah, you want to cover? I'm like, no, 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 let me buy it. I'll buy it. Um, I don't need to. I don't need free stuff. Um, so I bought it and. I tell you what, it took me a few tries to get it on the silencer. It was in, actually super insane. Um, it's a but like this thing. Like if you guys don't, if you guys haven't felt one of these, it's not normal, dude. This is not a normal cover. This thing, it's a bunch of layers of Kevlar and basically mineral insulators. So you have like basalt and silica, like basically minerals that are that it's like it's basically like <laughs> rocks that you can't burn. It's like. It's not the uh, okay. Let me let me say that a little more technically. It's things that have a very high flash point, like a really high flash point to the point where, like you're not going to ignite this. And so they're all those things. They're layered right, and they're stitched together with stainless steel thread. And then around that, there's a steel cable that you wrap around to tighten it all. It's, dude, it's the crazy, like, you when you put it, you're like, what is this? Like, it's like a straight, it's, I think they actually call it the straight jacket. It's like a straight jacket, dude. It is the most insane cover I've ever seen. I was like, this, like, you put this on the silencer? Okay. Um, but it's so stiff. It's, that's the problem with this thing. It is so stiff. I actually talked to them multiple times because I was so busy. Like, I split up the installation into different days. Like, I, I got it. I tried to put it on. I was like, Ugh. I couldn't get to work. I, like, I DM'd him. I was like, dude, like. What am I doing wrong? He sent me a video. I was like, okay. So I, I but I didn't have time, so I set it aside. Then like the next day, I, I was like, oh man, I have some time. Maybe I can put the silencer cover on. I go and I get it. I put it on. I was like, oh, I can't, I can't get it. I sent him a message. I'm like, dude, I can't do it. He's like, you do it. I was like, no. Uh, and then I like, I was too busy. So I set it aside. And then like the third time, like finally, like I had some more time. And like I, I was like, okay, dude, I, I'm gonna do this. If I break it, I break it. So I, I put it on. And what I had to do is I had to loosen the nylon strap and then I had to kind of like really methodically tighten it from like front to back with a cable. You wouldn't understand this unless you have to have one in your hand for it. To, but suffice to say, I got it done. I figured it out, got it on there. It was hard. It's not, e it's not an easy installation the first time you put it on. I'm told that as you shoot it and it like kind of, you know, wears in with the heat and everything, I'm told it's easier to get on. And I'll, I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> but it was a pain in the butt to get it on. Now, my first impressions were, or are, it looks cool. It's very unique. Nice. Hug. It hugs the back of the silencer is what it does. It has like, it's almost, it's like a cable. It's like a drawstring. It's not a drawstring. It's a draw cable. And it crimps on the back Hugs the back of the silencer. This thing is not going to move forward, dude. It can't. It can't. Uh, now, will it move backward? Well, I, I can, if I pull on it hard, I can pull it back. Um, It's not going to move. I don't think it's going to move when I'm shooting it. We're going to find out. It, it's going to hit the rail if it moves much. But, um, you know, folks have told me theirs doesn't move when they shoot which is something they really liked about it and that's not what they said about some of these other covers so that was interesting so yeah some some other actually some other covers apparently not only move but they set on fire so that sucks um the movement is a problem you don't want it to move also folks have told me that these they don't have mirage or the the, the mirage is almost non-existent so i was like oh, that's cool uh, not I, I again not something i really care about on this gun in particular but that's just some feedback I wanted to relay to you guys. So yeah, we'll see. The cover's on my on my silencer right now. Uh, I'm gonna post a photo of it with the podcast so you can see it. It's weird. There's a steel cable that wraps around. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's so crazy. You you wrap the steel cable around and then it goes to a, a latch that and this latch is secured with this Kevlar strap and that's the Kevlar strap that I lengthened so that the latch could reach the cable it's simple the, it's different it looks different than any other thing but it is simple it's, it's deceptively simple but it's incredibly difficult to install the first time it is I think that's by design 
you know, knowing what I know now, you know, you, you loosen the Kevlar strap, you stand a better chance of success. Now, make sure you're overlapping the edges so it's like you kind of wrap it around and you have when you when you wrap the the cover around the silencer, that other edge goes over the first edge. I think that's something that you need to do um, or you're never going to get it on. Okay? So there's that. I there's actually this one dude I know on Instagram we were talking. He told me he used needle nose pliers to pull the cable on his I was like, I was like, don't do that. D use your hands. I think you can use your hands. You'd be all right. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Yeah. No, I'm going to, I am going to um, let you guys know how I like it. I'm looking at it now. It looks nice. I, 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 they had like a brown and a black. I bought a black one. I think black is a good color for a rifle. See, it's a fashion accessory now. Here, talking about the co color of my cover. That's what I was afraid was going to happen. Okay. Topic three, a time of one hour. <laughs> five minutes and 33 seconds i get some water oh my god all right so what i only took <clears throat> only took like 10 minutes to talk about or 15 minutes to talk about the cover all right topic three yeah welcome to the new peace science members who have thrown their hat in the ring thank you you guys are throwing your hat in the ring to make the grassroots effort effort going and some of you, bless your hearts, um, you're sending, sending me your personal silencers for testing. You guys are crazy. Yeah, you guys are insane. It's a good kind of crazy, though. It's a good kind of crazy. You know, without without the, the truly dedicated people, this would be way harder. So I do want to thank you guys. And I, you know what? I was actually getting pretty close to getting caught up with email, but but now I'm behind again. It's, it's like Santa's list. I was wondering that. You know, Santa delivers all these gifts. He, he reads all these lists. All, all, all the gifts the kids want. And they, he, must, he must get done reading and get more, get more emails. I don't know how he deals with it. You know, that's how that goes. Now, you know, testing is hopefully coming up within this week. I... I don't want to jinx it. Uh, you know, after after I get done with that test series, oh, I think I'm going to be able to breathe a little bit better. Right now, things are pretty hectic. Thank you to those of you who joined it. Dude, it means a lot. It It's not much, but it's a lot to me, okay? Like, you guys who joined, you may not think it's a lot. But, man, every time one of you joins, I read your name. I read where you're from. I think about it. Like, oh, John Doe from Anytown, USA. Thanks, John Doe. I think about it. I look at your name. Like, I, you're not, I'm not, it's not like, you know, I get an email when you join. Then I got to go into the system and look at it. Like, it's not automated. I, 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 you know, I was talking to my, my woman. She's like, you know, you should automate all this. I was like, no, I don't want to automate it. If I automate it, then I lose touch. Don't know who it is. Don't know who's good. I got to, I got to respond to him. I got to, she looked at me like I was crazy. It's part of it. I just, I don't know. Like, I, you're you're a name to me like all you who join you you are you're, you have a name like i'm not like looking at you as a number so um i just want you guys to know that it, the, like just like the first member who ever joined um all of you are like him or her no it was, it was a him <laughs> yeah but you all get my attention so you know you know some of you though are legitimately insane and i love it i have sitting in front of me a silencer co omega 9k it's a little pistol silencer it's crazy. It's actually really cool. I can't wait to shoot it. Um, it's actually from a guy. Guy, it's his personal silencer. He was he was in his form four weight. He was like, "Oh yeah, dude, it's like sitting in a in a gun store. Can I form three it to you?" I was like, "What?" I was like, "It's your silencer." He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "I was like, it's not approved yet." He's like, "No." He's like, "You want me to test it before you get it approved?" He's like, "Yeah." And I was like, "I don't even know if that's possible." So yeah, that's happening. Um, I don't I don't really know like how that's gonna it's either it's either he's it's either it was in the middle of transfer or he had a couple of them and one of them hadn't he hadn't started the paperwork on yet i'm hoping it was that one but all i know is i got a i got his silencer with his name and receipt on the box from his dealer <laughs> with a copy of the form three to me so <laughs> sir i have your omega 9k it is safe but it is on a form three to me right now, so I can't wait to test it. And then another gentleman, he actually he already had his silencer on a form four. 
he sent me his Thunder Beast Dominus. Very rare silencer. Thunder Beast doesn't have really high production numbers, so that was crazy. I still have that that one. Sir, if you're listening, your silencer is in good hands and uh, will be tested soon. So please stay tuned. I sent you an email. I try to, I, you know, whenever people have sent me their personal silencers, I actually send them an email every week just to let them know that everything's okay and and to when to expect that I'm going to test. Like, I'm so nervous. I like I try to avoid consumers sending me silencers because I'm like, oh, my God, like, that's your baby. Like, I don't want to, like, I could only imagine if I had waited a year for something and I shipped it to somebody. I'd be so paranoid. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm a silencer consumer. I'm like you. So like when I, I'm like so careful with them. I'm like, oh my God. Like I just, it's it's like a, it's like everything stops. Like if I have to move their silencer, I'm like, okay, I'm going to take the silencer. I'm going to put it in my safe. I'm going to do it this way. <laughs> I'm going to put it in this box. It's going to be here. And, you know, I like, I'm very, I'm very like uh, meticulous because I would never forgive myself if I like messed up someone's form four silencer. You know what I mean? So when I, I it's it's really insane. Uh, people are they're reaching out to me every day. They're they're sending me mounts. Some people are like at, like every day someone offers a silencer or a gun to me for testing. Like I usually say thank you, not right now. I appreciate your offer because because when I when I need something I will let you guys know. Like I don't, but I can't believe the generosity. You folks are amazing, dude. I, actually, you know I should say I can believe it. Pew Science Army. Respect. I can. So yeah, with that, wish me wish me luck on this upcoming test program coming up, guys. It's gonna be a doozy. Wish me luck. I have a mission. If I am successful, I'm going to be very happy. <laughs> God. Please, God. And you guys are gonna be incredibly happy too. And that is gonna make me even happier. You see? It's a happy train. It is. I will talk to you folks again soon.